Hello and welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. My name is Greg Deckler and it's about 6 a.m. here uh, where I am. And uh, instead of doing what I should be doing, which is working on my next book, I'm here, here making this video, uh, kind of continuing the discussion around my sort of deep concerns around the state of Power BI desktop today. Um, before we get into that, though, so the book I'm working on now is Power BI Cookbook uh, Third Edition. Um, I'm like a month behind schedule, which is kind of unusual for me. Um, I'm usually, you know, ahead of schedule or right at schedule, right? Um, but I can like, yeah, like I said, I've been busy. Um, things have picked up recently. I completed about four chapters uh, in the span of about 10 days. Um, but I sort of hit a roadblock uh, with uh, chapter 10, administering and monitoring Power BI. As I'm going through this chapter, right, I, I realized that it, it really had nothing to do with administering or monitoring Power BI. It was more sort of using Power BI as a monitoring and reporting tool for like SQL Server analysis services and that sort of stuff. So I'm considering sort of gutting that entire chapter, all the rest, most or all of the recipes in that chapter, um, and really refocusing it around things like tenant settings and administration and governance, organizational video uh, visuals things of that nature, the admin portal, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, so anyway, if you have, if you own a second edition uh, of Power BI Cookbook uh, or first edition, um, you know, love to hear your thoughts around, you know, potentially kind of refocusing that chapter around more around like Power BI subject matter, if you will. If I can bring this up here. Yeah, I need to be able to see myself. Okay, so on to the subject at hand, right? So Sort of in the last video, I kind of teed up this conversation around my concerns around Power BI Desktop and its ongoing development, uh, with where the, kind of the state of affairs of where it is. And I kind of teed that up by like, you know, going and in, in showing this the scrolling list of preview features that we have now in this building backlog of stuff, right? And that nothing ever seems to get out in GA. And even if you look at the last, you know, year, Right, you know, so at the end of the year, they started releasing some stuff, uh, but it, it's all preview stuff, right? It's not it's not GA. And if a feature isn't GA, is it really a feature? You know, you should really be using it in production scenarios, right? These are the kind of questions that I have. Um, I don't, for my part, I don't consider a feature a feature until it's GA, right? It's, it's not part of the product unless it actually is officially part of the product. Um, so that's kind of my perspective on it. But so today I wanted to kind of continue that discussion, um, but really start talking about my, you know, if it was just a, I kind of brought up in the last video, you know, it could just be a prioritization, right? Hey, we're going to prioritize fabric and go do that, right? And then we can get that done in six months from preview to, to GA. Um, you know, but if it was just a prioritization, hey, we're prioritizing new features over cleaning up this backlog of technical debt that we have, right? And technical debt to me is it's bugs, right? It's features that are in preview that, you know, have yet to be GA or released. Um, and it's also things like, you know, things that are, okay, it's in the, it's in the system, it works, but one wouldn't really call it fully featured, right? Like all of the Power BI core visuals I would put in that to, into that camp, right? They're there, they work, they're not great. They could be vastly improved upon. And I know there's a, an effort specifically within the Microsoft PBI core visuals keeps commenting on my LinkedIn stuff, um, you know, about, you know, hey, we're you're trying to clean this stuff up. So I, and I get it, right? But you know, those, that's what I consider technical debt. And if you look at this preview features, um, you know, I kind of did some analysis of this. And so there's, you know, the preview features that are here, my best estimate on that is that there's like 38 years worth of preview features, right? <laughs> They're sitting in there. They, you know, if you count up all the years and the months that these have been in preview, it comes out to about 35, 38, right? And, you know, you can quibble with my how I determined, you know, when a preview feature was released and all of that sort of stuff. And the average length is like 1.5 years right that these things have been sitting in here and you know you may be like okay you know i get it you know and not counting for things that went ga from preview to ga you know because they're not in this list and i get all that right but again nothing in the last year has kind of gone ga so whatever um you know but it would be interesting analysis i think to like what is the average length of time that a feature you know spends in preview before it gas you know over the last seven eight years of power bi development right i think it'd be interesting to know that 
I mean, all I can say is, okay, based upon my analysis, you know, the features you have currently in this list have been, you know, on average been sitting in there for, you know, one and a half years, which is kind of tragic. Um, but anyway, so, but if it was just, I think there's some, there's some reasons behind this and it deals with complexity um, and the technical debt sort of snowballing. Um, so again, if it was just we're prioritizing features versus technical debt, it's one thing. Um, but I think that it goes deeper than that and that kind of the technical debt has reached a critical mass to this point where it's preventing features from funneling through the pipeline, if you will. Um, so, so technical debt. The, well, you know, how can this happen, right? And if you think about the, the development history of Power BI, right, where it was really the first product that kind of stood the whole Microsoft mantra of, hey, we get a release every three years, right? And, you know, and Power BI comes out and it's coming out with, you know, new features and a new release every month, right? And everybody, including myself, was like ecstatic at the time, right? You know, and then we thought it was a great thing. And it's, it's not that it isn't a bad thing, right? It, was, it is a good thing uh, to have that kind of development pace. It's, it's, it's awesome. But, I think what you're starting to see now are sort of what you could call the chinks in the armor or the chickens coming home to roost or whatever colloquialism you want to use. Um, when you start to, when you do that, right, you, there, there, it's inevitable that you're going to build up technical debt. You're going to build up features that, like, I, I, you know, I have to believe that this shape map visual, right? Why has this thing been in, in, in preview for five years? It hasn't changed at all. Right. And, uh, and, you know, my best guess, you know, is it there's some bugs in it or, or is it some something issue with the shape map visual? You know, it's not compatible with other stuff. I don't think it's any of that. I really, really think the shape map visual is, is that Microsoft came to realize realization that this should never have been a core visual right within the product that should have been released in the app store. And not been a core visual of the of the product is my best guess on why this is still sitting in preview, but then they're kind of trapped right. Now they're like, well, if we take it out of the preview and put it in the app store only, then people that made reports based upon the shape map visual, that's going to break that stuff. So, but we really don't want to release shape map visual to GA because then it's part of the core product and now we have to support it and, and ongoing development and blah, blah, blah. So we'll just, we'll just leave it in preview and just let it sit there. And then we just, you know, just kind of forget about it. That's my best guess on why shape map visual is sitting there in preview, but it's that that's a crap reason, man. Microsoft, it's like just just bite the bullet and just take it out of preview and GA it, make it part of the core product, or put it in the app store and take it out of here, right? I mean, crap or get off the pot, right? So anyway, <laughs> I, I digress. There's gonna be a lot of digressing in this video, I have a feeling. Um, so technical debt, you know, reaching critical mass, you can think of it as like a snowball effect. Right where you know you're at first you know you're pushing the snowball along and you're adding snow to that snowball and then but at some point you kind of reach this critical mass where the the snowball is heavy enough and you know it starts to roll by itself and it starts rolling downhill and picking up snow and right you can think of it like that or you can you know you can take the reverse approach and say you know you're pushing the snowball along up a hill and then at some point it reaches it gets so big that you can't push it anymore, right? You, you just can't push it anymore. It's like Sisyphus or whatever you want to talk, call it, say. So anyway, think of it in those terms, in terms of snowball effect, where basically you add a feature to a product, but that feature then impacts two or three other areas of the software. And so then to, so it builds up technical debt, right? And so, but then to fix those, you know, each of those two or three different areas, that then affects two or three different other areas. And then two, and it just kind of snowball in a cascades, right? So, Basically, if you're not keeping your eye on the ball with the technical debt within a software product, you know, and it, it can sneak up on you, right? It can be, you can go along, you think you're doing fine, think you're doing fine, and all of a sudden all hell breaks loose, right? And now every time you do anything within the product, it just cascades effects and just creates a whole mess. And you basically have to, you know, let's call a timeout and we got to go and refactor a bunch of stuff. And refactoring it basically is a is code word developers use for like, we put a bunch of hacky crap in there and now, you know, now the now the chickens have come home to roost. We gotta go fix it. <laughs> so, so I think that's what's going on in the product. And you're in. You're like Rick. You know, how do you don't know that? You're, you're you don't. And you're right. I don't know that. I have no special access to the Power BI development team. I'm just a, a guy in the world, right? Just looking at stuff. But I'm gonna show you. You know, this is Exhibit A, preview feature. Now we have a scrolling list. But I'm gonna show you two other 
things about the product um, today that I think are sort of indicative of this happening within the product. Because when that sort of stuff happens, when you start to get that snowball effect of the uh, the technical debt, you start getting one, you start getting unintended consequences, right? Do you release something over here or do something over here and affect something over here that really, you really didn't intend to do? Um, and then the second thing that happens is you start getting really inconsistent like UI, UX behavior and, and things that are going on of that nature where, you know, hey, I'm doing the same thing, but it works differently depending on what I'm doing. You know, I'm trying to do essentially the same operation, but it acts differently and I have to go through different hoops within the UI in order to accomplish something. And I, I'm going to show two specific examples of that right here. All right, so let's, let's just move on to this. So preview features, yep. Okay, so speaking of preview features, we have this, <laughs> this, this DAX query view, which again, if I could digress a little bit about this. So the DAX query view, the first time I ever saw this, I think it was like seven years ago, about seven years ago, one of my first MVP summit, we went there and, the, and an engineer came in and they, he showed this, this, this kind of lame little icon here. And it's funny because as I remember it, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, just, you know, it's, a, it's a kind of a lame, crappy little icon, but, you know, we'll fix it when, once we actually release this thing. Um, and, and sort of the idea behind this was that this was a... This is supposed to be the home base for like all of your DAX code was the concept, right? Um, so anyway, so yeah, this is just funny. I, I don't think they changed the crappy lame ass icon, right? It's still the same, um, which is just like, well, we'll just put a page with and we'll write DAX on it. You know, it's like, I mean, it just looks junky compared to even the other icons, right? I mean, they got to do something to fix that. Anyway, well, so thoughts on this initially is it's, it's kind of cool from a, a like a, I put my geeky hat on. It's like, yeah, it's kind of cool. I can I can do things like evaluate, you know, in an info, you know, columns, let's say, right? And then we can we can run that. Resolve the error to see what DAX about can only on databases which have at least. Oh, OK, crap. Well, fine, 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 fine. Open report. Fine, whatever. Just pick one. We'll come back to this this one though, because this is all, this one I know some something else specifically is working with this. So give me a minute. It. I'm not even doing much on this system. I don't know why this is taking so long. All right. Probably because of teams. I am running the new team, so it did. All right. So let's go back to here. Okay, so they give you an example. We'll do info, info columns, right? Run it. All right, so you know this is kind of cool playing around with the, you know, the new info functions. You know, they basically ex expose the TM schema, you know, DMVs, the data management views, and all that sort of stuff. And you can kind of write your code here and stuff like that, right? Um, so if I wanted to write a measure here, I could, you know, do all that sort of stuff. But it's and it's kind of cool from a geeky perspective, right? But, I, you know, when I start thinking about this from like a business user perspective, it's like, how many users of Power BI are going to use this thing? Um, like, really? You know, like your average business user, are they going to come in here and like, you know, like you get this command palette? And I mean, this is just kind of bizarre stuff. You know, all this, you know, are they really going to use this? You know, it, I don't think it's intended for like, 90% of the Power BI users, right? And it it really doesn't have a lot of features. I know it's a preview feature, blah, 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 but it really kind of, you know, I can't like just take this, you know, I can't just take this, right click it and say, you know, create measure, right? I have to, you know, sort of copy this code and then, you know, copy it and then I can come over here and I, you know, okay, cal calculations. Yeah, I can't even like, I can't even like create a measure in this thing at all, right? Unless maybe if I go to model, nope. So like, it's like, so now I have to copy stuff from here and then I have to go back to another view, right click and then create a measure based upon the code I just created, I just wrote here. It just seems like it's kind of a not well thought out user interface. And then the other thing is like, even if I do this info columns, right? Well, I mean, so there's an actual recipe in the chapter 10 of all things of Power BI Cookbook of, 
using the data management views, right, to kind of document your data model and that sort of thing. So it's like, okay, so, you know, what I really want is to be able to have this info columns and have that in a table in my data set so that I can, you know, create a report based upon it. But then, you know, also, you know, there's no, there's no button here to like add, this would be great if I could just click a button and say add the data model, right? But no, I have to copy this thing, right? So I copy it. And then, you know, if I go back up to here and go like to edit, enter data query. Okay, so it actually worked, but in a lot of cases, right, you exceed the enter data query, right? You exceed the, the amount of uh, space that you can, and, and especially if this is a small data model, right? If in large data model, you're gonna, you do a columns, you're gonna exceed the, you know, what you can actually paste into an enter data query. So then, well, you know, what do you have to do? Open Excel, paste it into Excel, save that, connect Power BI to that Excel file, drag in the data. I mean, just convoluted and not well thought out. I, it just, I don't know what the purpose of this or why this got given priority over the the plethora of other things, you know, that are actually going to be useful in Power BI, you know, to actually fix. But on to the topic at hand, um, these info DAX functions, right, were, you know, were created, right? So then they work, right? I can run them, right? And, um, oh, I'm back in, I'm back in my other database. Ah, I tell you. Run. Yes, they work. All right. But again, like I said, I mean, I want this in a data in a table, right? In my data model. But if I go up here and I go to modeling and I go to new table and I want to create a new table. I want to create a new table. I don't get click happy here. All right, info column and then I hit enter here. Let me what was that? <laughs> I mean, that's an error, like a hard R kind of error, like the bad kind of error, right? And then, you know, you get this unexpected error occurred, right? I mean, it's totally, it's barely a handle error, right? It, obviously, the it shelled out to something, like it was a bad, you know, bad. It's even referencing like a, a, a C++ file, TMT transaction.c++, right? I mean, that, that's a that's a hard error um where the 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 normal error checking and that sort of stuff didn't catch that at all um and so it went it was it you know it cascaded down to a, like a, a you know like the bottom end of the error of the error checking just make sure that the whole program just doesn't up and belly up and die right that's what <laughs> that's what just happened there right um so anyway so you i mean you can't yeah and so then it comes back here an unexpected error blah 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 it's like that was bad. Um, so you can't use them in why? Why not? It returns a table, right? But they're only usable in this DAX query editor. That makes zero sense to me, right? And and why is it even why are you even allowing me to enter it here if it's going to cause that kind of an error with the program, right? Where it actually <laughs> brings up a DOS window or a window or window shell basically, and like that's bad. I mean that. I mean, normally, if you're, you're typing DAX and you have, you know, some incorrect code in here, like, you know, var, you know, blah equals one, and you hit enter, right? It doesn't shell out <laughs> to some Windows shell and then, you know, get an, give you an unexpected error. It just tells you, okay, this index is wrong, right? That's normal behavior, right? So I think... So there, there's one example of they're doing something over here. The left hand's doing something and not really paying attention to what the right hand is doing. And there's unintended consequences going on between, you know, within the <clears throat> within the system. And in case, you know, you're probably telling me, well, that's great, Greg, but that's a preview feature. So it's not, you know, uncommon to have that kind of stuff and it'll all be fixed with GAs in 16 years, whatever. So sure, fine. But let me show you a better one. Let me show you one. Um, it's all with existing GA code and just the amount of inconsistency that you get within the system. All right, so let's get back to this guy. Okay, so everyone knows that when you go to get data, right, and you get data from SQL Server, there's different ways to connect to SQL Server, right? There's import and there's direct query. So if I do localhost and I get my AdventureWorks, 
EW2022 database here. I can connect to it via direct query, or I get to choose import, right? I have that, that feature. Both of the connectivity modes are listed here, both import and direct query. If I connect via direct query, it doesn't really matter. I'll just pick a couple tables, right? Load them. Eventually get in here. OK, so <clears throat> now two different modes, right? I had a choice at the beginning, import or direct query. Um, now, if I want to, if I screwed up, right, I connect to be a direct query. You know, if I do import and I want to go back to direct query, I can't do that, you know, but if I do direct query and I want to go back to import, you can do that. It's down here in this, this what I call the the wasteland of, of UI UX design, right? Every UI UX designer, you don't put anything important down here because this is the last place anyone is going to look for anything. But that's where they put this, right? So if I want to change it, I can click to change it. And so, you know, I can switch it to import and, you know, it's basically, it's irreversible, you know, blah, blah, blah. All right, so that's why I can do that, right? Switch all tables to import. All right, so you can let that finish. That's fine. Now, <clears throat> contrast that with the experience of connecting to a Power BI data set, right? So in Power BI data set, you have multiple options of connecting, right? You have live, you have direct query, and you have import. Bear with me on that one, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, import mode. Um, so if I go to Power BI, and they used to be that I had two different connectors. Right, so when they first came out with direct query for analysis services and blah blah blah, right, it had you know I could either pick Power BI in uh, connector or the direct query for Power BI datasets, and one was the live connection, one was the the direct query. But now they've they've gotten rid of that, and you just have one. It's Power BI semantic models. So if I click on Power BI semantic models, it brings up here. It doesn't really matter what I what I hurt, what I decide fabric capacity metrics no, yes or whatever. This one's fine. And I hit connect, right? But it, nowhere in that interface, one, it was a completely different interface um, than what was seen before. Um, okay, I guess I got to pick my, that's fine, accounts, calculations, customers, dates, whatever, submit. But in nowhere did I get a chance to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I probably should have done this. It's mixed storage mode or whatever. I probably should restart this. Open report. Uh, just file new reports. I should do this with its own little system here. And I got to wait for 17. Oh, yeah, this time it launched pretty fast. OK, so again, go back here. Power BI, semantic models. Pick my semantic model, pick my tables. OK, all right, so because I was in mix, that's why I, I that was what the, threw me off. It's like, it shouldn't be asking me to like pick my tables. I'm just connecting live, right? So I've connected live to this thing. And you can see that down there, connected live to Power BI. So nowhere in that interface, nowhere in the interface, even though I have two different connectivity modes for Power BI data set, semantic model, right? direct query and live, nowhere in that interface did it decide to tell me, hey, do you want to connect live to it or do you want to connect via direct query? Right, it just connected to, to it live, it didn't even ask me. So if I want to make changes to it, right, I can click this again, direct query connection is required, add a local data model, right, I can now convert this to direct query. Yep, I want all these things to be direct query now instead of live. Let it complete. All right, now my storage mode is direct query. But I can't convert this direct query to import mode. You're like, maybe you're thinking, well, Greg, it's it's a Power BI data, you know, semantic model. Why would you ever want to import from that? Okay, but what is a Power BI semantic model? It's an analysis services tabular cube, correct? Right? So what if, what if I go and maybe I'll go back to I'll just bring up a new one. File, new report. 
hopefully this isn't then sometimes this freaks out on me so we'll see what happens all right so power bi semantic models just an analysis services tabula cube so what happens when i go to and say get data analysis services Oh, look at that. <laughs> I get the option import or connect live. Now, direct query is not there, right? So, so with SQL, you have import and direct query as data connection models, and you get both the options. With Power BI data sets, you can do import, direct query, or live, but you only you don't get any of those options. And with SQL Server Analysis Services database, you should have live, direct query, and import, but you only get two of those options. And maybe you're saying, well, Greg, you're wrong. There's no import for Power BI datasets, but it's an analysis services cube. So if I connect to the XMLA endpoint, oh, and of course I don't have that at the moment. Oh, let me go get that. Yeah, I think it's over here. It's on a different screen, people. So give me a second. I got to go to my workspace settings, copy my workspace setting. So if I copy the XMLA endpoint, right, and I switch to import, and I say OK. Do, 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 do. Oh, look at that, <laughs> right? There, I can import from a Power BI data set. I just have to do it through the analysis services connector. Hey, look at this, I can import all my tables, load. So I just, so for all of you that says, well, can't import from the Power BI semantic model. Yes, you can. <laughs> it's just an analysis services cube, people. So. So this is what I'm talking about in terms of just just wildly inexplicable UI UX bizarreness, right? In terms of, and that's indicative, I think, of a very complex code base where there's a tremendous amount of technical debt. And it's just, you know, nobody's bothering to clean any of this kind of crap up. But I mean, think about it from trying to, for me, and where I've really noticed this, within uh, Power BI. One is in writing the updating, you know, my books and that sort of stuff, just trying to explain the how to do something in Power BI. It's it's like everything takes 20 more. And yeah, so this is where you get sometimes more more memory than the limit and blah, blah, blah. But this does work if you pick small enough tables and that sort of stuff. You can actually import from this. I don't know why you get these errors. Um, but anyway, so you know, everything takes more time to explain. It's more steps. Everything's like, you know, it's like exponentially more steps to try to do anything within Power BI, it seems like. Um, so I think that also speaks to some of the complexity, but just these bizarre UI UX things. I was trying to talk to somebody that was brand new to Power BI and it kind of explain all of this sort of stuff. And it was just like, it, it made me embarrassed for the product, to be quite honest. It's like, well, if you do it this way, then you have to do this, this. You know, and I think over time, if you've worked with Power BI long enough, you know, you just kind of accept these quirks and the little changes and things like that that happen over time. But the, if you really take a step back and look at it and try to explain it to like somebody that's new to the system, new to the program, it's just like, yeah, man, it's, this stuff makes no sense at all. And I'm I'm embarrassed for the product for, you, you know, for it. Uh, that it, you have to, you know, that this is how it works. Um, that's just kind of the state of affairs that I, that I'm in right now uh, with this product. Um, it's it just there's so much stuff that doesn't make any sense to me, um, and just the amount of inconsistencies in the product, and you know, and things that are just flat out kind of broken. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's it's almost like I can't. I I. And to the point where I most I can't recommend this product to to, to new people. Um, that's where I feel like I am with it, um, with the state of affairs of Power BI Desktop. But that's it's not a it's not a fun place to be in, in my opinion, um, because you know I've lived and loved with loved this product for so long, but I'm having a real problem now a days uh, with the state of affairs that this thing is in to like be able to say yeah this is a good product that you should use. Um, because I don't, damn. well, I'm going to leave it there. All right, well, that's what I had to say. So I've said it. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you next time.